All right, in this video, we're going to go over chord extensions and chord alterations. Now, this is the stuff that can get a little bit scary for people who are new to things like jazz, but I want to break it down and show you a couple of things that you can look out for on places like Machine, where we have chord mode and you have some really funny looking chords, and then other programs like Lo-Fi Piano or Swing More or the chord pads that come with Cubase and make sense of some of these chord numbers that look very confusing, scary. I'm going to assume you've watched my first chords video, so I'll put a link to that in the description where I go over everything from the chord positions in keys, so places where you'll have like the one chord, the four chord, the five chord in Roman numerals, and then I also talk about scale position in chords. So the Arabic numbers that you see in chords where you see something like a C7, which means a C dominant seven chord. So I get all the way up to sevenths in that video. In this video, we're going to take it up into the ninths, elevenths, and thirteenths. And then we're going to look at how you can alter all of the numbers in a chord and make some really funky sounding chords. And then in future videos, I will show you how we can use those chords to good effect and places to use certain chords and break you out of the habits that you've been stuck in maybe writing with your own music. So let's start with a dominant seven chord and look at the numbers. We've got the one, the three, the five. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now we're going to add the nine, the 11, and the 13. Why don't we call this one again? We call this two, right? If this is a nine, why are they calling it a nine? And why are they calling this 11 and not four? And why are they calling this 13 and not six? So that is confusing. And suffice it to say that the reason we do this is because when you write out chords like a C9 chord, when you write just C9, jazz musicians will assume that you already mean the seven in there. And when you write the 11, when you write a C11 chord, you're going to already assume that there is a seven in there as well. So they're thinking about these extensions, these 9, 11, the 13s, they're thinking of them as existing above the seven. But one thing that you need to understand is when you see something like a C7, or if you see something like a C13, those are going to be assumed to be dominant seven chords. And they're also going to assume that you have at least the third and the seventh in there. So a C13 chord, make sure I've got the third and the seventh. And now I've got the 13 in there. When it's a 13, you can always add the nine and the 11 in there as well. It doesn't have to happen, but it can happen. And it'll usually work in situations like that. If you see a minor chord and it just says C minor nine, you, again, you assume that the seventh is in there and we know it's minor, so we have to get that minor third in there. The fifth, the five note, that one can often be dropped. You don't necessarily have to have those in there. Same thing goes for major seven chords. We've got the nine in there. We assume that the third and the seventh are in there, but the third and the seventh are major thirds and major sevens in this case. Okay, nines, elevens, thirteens, out of the way. Now we get into the fun stuff, the altered chords. And when we refer to alter chords, we're referring to some alteration of a note in that series of thirds, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, all the way up. When you're in a major chord, so a major seven chord, you're not often going to find a C major seven with a flat nine. Sounds a little bit gross, but you will see a C major seven with a sharp eleven. Any kind of major seven chord with a sharp 11 is going to work really nicely. And in fact, we rarely ever see a C major seven chord with a regular 11 because that note right there sounds really crunchy and gross with the major seven chord. When we get into soloing, you're going to be able to play the Lydian scale over top of that. That's kind of jumping ahead. That's that major seven sharp 11 note in there. It's got a Lydian sound. So we'll worry about modes in a totally different video. And so a major seven with a 13 sounds really nice. So if you ever see something like this, a C6 chord, what that means is, yes, there is the 13 or the six, same note, remember. But in this case, if you see a C6, you're going to assume that there is no seven. So now for altered chords for the minor seven chords, we could have a flat nine. 
C minor 9 sharp 11, that's a pretty intense chord. Not very common. Another altered note that you will see in minor chords, in minor 7 chords, would be where you take the 5th and you lower it. So we've got the C minor 7 chord there. Let's take the 5th, lower it down. So now we've got a C minor 7 chord with a flat 5. And if you look at those notes, that is what classical musicians would call a half diminished 7 chord. So a fully diminished 7 chord right here. This is a half diminished 7 chord and it's very common in jazz music and in classical music. You'll see those chords all the time. They become very useful. You can use them to modulate to different keys. A beautiful chord to solo over. If you ever see something like a C minor 7 flat 5, there's a little tip here. The, the scale that you would solo over top of that is the major scale a semitone higher. So major scale a semitone higher for this C minor 7 flat 5 chord is C sharp major. So watch what happens. Play the major scale a semitone higher than whatever that root of that chord is. But one more fun minor 7 altered chord for you that you're going to see commonly would be the minor chord with the major 7 in it. So that's this one right here. So we've got a minor triad in the, in the bottom with a major 7 up top instead of a minor 7. There's a regular minor 7. Now we've got a major 7 up top. You're going to hear that in like the Incredibles theme songs. You'll hear it in the James Bond stuff. You'll hear it in pretty much everything that's trying to imitate something in the spy genre. And then as far as the dominant 7 chords, probably the most important ones for these altered notes. Let's start with the 9 on this one. So one thing that you would add is there's our 9, as you would flat the 9s. And so in this case, we'd call it a C7 flat 9. Another really juicy chord would be the C7 sharp 9. Now listen to that chord. That is a fun chord. And you can hear I've got the dominant 7 in the, in the bottom, and I've got the E natural here, which makes it a dominant 7. And then I've got this E flat, or a D sharp, I guess, up at the top here, which is adding a ton of tension because that is very dissonant. It's really clashy, but it sounds great. And we usually try and keep these two notes uh, apart from each other so we don't play it like this. Not that you can't, but so you can hear that in C major, it just sounds really nice, really juicy. The five chord. So that's the sharp nine chord. Definitely worth checking that one out. That's one of my favorites. Next we get up to the 11. And so if we're on a C dominant 7 chord, and we add an 11, we can also add a sharp 11 chord. Adds a lot of tension, definitely. The sharp 11 chord is a weird one because we can sometimes call that one a C7 flat 5. In this case, we wouldn't call it a sharp 11 because we want to insinuate that there is no 5 in this chord. So you either write it as a sharp 11, which means that there is a 5, or you write it as a flat 5, which means there is no 5 in this chord. So you wouldn't play the 5th scale degree of that chord. Then we also have the alteration of the flat 13. There's the regular 13. Now let's make it flat. Really nice sounding chord. And in that case, we do have the, the 5 in there as well. We could call that chord a sharp 5, so we could call it a C7 sharp 5. And in that case, we wouldn't have the 5th scale degree because the 5th scale degree has been sharpened. Those are the fun, juicy chords, the alterations of the 9, the 11, the 13, and the 5. Sometimes you will see chords written as something like C7 alt or C alt. That usually means one or more of the regular notes in that chord or the chord extensions are altered or changed. And it's usually a dominant 7 chord that we're referring to. You can flat the 9 and the 13, sharp the 11, whatever, but there is no exact science to that alt uh, symbol, which is, to me, it's a little like, why not just write exactly which alterations you want in the chord at that moment? But yeah, you'll see that alt a lot of times. The other things that I quick, should quickly mention is if you ever see a chord that has a slash in it, so like a D over C, that just means that you're going to have a chord 
over top of a note in the bottom. So think of it like the chord on top is what the upper notes will play. So my right hand and the thing underneath the slash or to the right of it is the thing that the bass would play. Or if you're just on the piano, just the low note on the piano. So if it's a D7 over C, that means you play the D7 chord and you put the C in the bass. And that's it. And then the other thing I should mention also is sus chords. Sus chords usually mean that there is a note that is sustained or a couple notes that are sustained. So in the case of just a regular C sus four, right here, the fourth scale degree is sustained and then it drops down to the third. So that's a sus four. And then there's also the sus two where the two is sustained. And then you would resolve that to the E. So it's like often resolves. So that's the sus chords. And then when we get into the more complex ones where it might just say something like B flat sus, if you see something like B flat sus, that's going to assume that you have the B flat in the bottom. And then all you have to do kind of a hack. And then all you have to do is play a major triad, a whole tone below whatever that note is. So I've got a B flat. I would play an A flat major triad in the right hand. And I could move that up. Or I can add the original note back in the B flat as well in the right hand. You see a, a D sus chord. You play a D in the left hand and a C major triad in the right hand. There it is. So that's what a sus chord does. It acts kind of like a dominant chord. So now when it comes to things like machine, so if you go to chord set minor eight on chords mode on machine, you're going to see those things like A minor 11 over E. So you play an A minor seven chord with the 11. Well, what's the 11 in that one right there? It's like the fourth scale degree. So that's the D over an E. Very cool sounding chord. And then we can see things like F major seven sharp five, F major seven with a sharp five. Beautifully tense sounding chord. A G minor seven flat five. That's just that half diminished chord that we talked about. So you're going to see these numbers in there now and you can start to make sense of some of those. We'll look at how we can use those in different positions and different places in musical ideas in future videos. You're also going to see that kind of stuff over in Cubase. If we go over to like this lo-fi piano, this one comes with these chords already on these pads. So we can see C minor 11. Well, that's just C minor with an 11. You can hear that note in that. You can hear it in this chord here. And you can hear the seven in there. Beautiful sounding chord. We've got G alt. So there we got. You can hear that flat nine in there. If we look over at swing more, we can see things like C major seven with a nine and a 13. So just adding those notes up at the top. C seven with a nine and a sharp 11. C seven with a nine and a sharp 11. Beautiful sounding chord. And then over on chord mode on Cubase, if we go down to the bottom area here and then make sure we're on the chord pads, I've got a whole video on chord pads in Cubase, so I'll put a link to that in the description. Make sure you go watch that to learn how you can manipulate these and plug in all these fancy chords. But now these chord positions should start to make a lot more sense to you as well. And if you want to add your own chord, you click this little editor and now we can see things like we've got the root note, we've got the chord quality, and then we've got the fancy stuff that you can add in here. And J just means major seven. Then we've got a flat nine, sharp nine, flat five or a sharp 11, same thing. Sharp five or flat 13, same thing. And then six or 13, same thing. And then you can also add slash chords in here. So I can have a D dominant seven over top of C. There it is. So that's a D over C. So I'm going to take this stuff further in future videos, show you some chord progressions that use these really juicy chords, when you could use them, how you could manipulate them and make them part of your musical language and really take your own music deeper in terms of the harmonic structure. So thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell and we'll see you in the next video.